There's a smart drug that nearly all of us rely on every single day to boost our concentration, to help ourselves wake up, to improve our memories. Of course, the title's somewhat given away my plot twist. I'm obviously talking about caffeine. But what exactly does caffeine do to your brain? Does it really make you smarter? Let's find out. makes you focus more, makes you feel less tired, you might get a slight wired feeling. I actually massively rely on caffeine, like way more than usual. That's because I'm a freelance writer, so most of my day is spent sitting down typing out words and I get paid by the word. So the more words I can write in a day, the more I get paid. So it's fascinating for me, someone who's interested in self-development, brain training, transhumanism, because it basically means that as I improve myself and my efficiency, I increase my profit. There's no limit, the limit is what I'm capable outputting. So yeah, and caffeine is one of the tools I use to certainly do a lot more work. A, I have to buy some kind of drink to sit in prep in Starbucks and Costa all day, otherwise they probably have security escort me out. But also, I drink it because it actually really does help the amount of work I can produce in a certain amount of time. If I drink a strong white Americano, you know, two or three times during the day, it'll probably increase my output by 2,000, 3,000 words. Maybe you're not in exactly that boat. Maybe you don't get paid per output each day. However, if you perform better, then you'll of course get noticed, hopefully, and eventually that might lead to a promotion, a better salary. Essentially, caffeine works by reducing the action of a neurotransmitter called adenosine in the brain. Adenosine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And what that means is that it quietens action between brain cells. It reduces the rate of firing, so your brain quietens down. GABA is another example of an inhibitory neurotransmitter. Normally, as adenosine builds up during the day, our brains quieten down and activity is reduced. This is a byproduct of the energy processes in the brain. It comes from ATP, which comes from glucose. When your uh, cells break down ATP, adenosine is released and this just builds up over time and you get tired and more groggy. When you drink caffeine, however, this blocks those receptors in the brain cells that are designed to receive adenosine and that prevents it from working. So suddenly you're not so tired, you're not so groggy, you wake back up. Basically it's reversing one of the processes that makes you feel tired as the day drags on. It reduces brain fog, makes you less sleepy, makes you feel more awake. Of course this can also make it more difficult to get to sleep. Cheers! I'm uh, not sponsored by Starbucks by the way, this is just a good sized mug with a nice pleasing thinness of china around the edge. Some of the other footage has been in prep, so that's proof that I'm not sponsored. Also, I don't have enough views and my videos aren't high quality enough. But the interesting effects of caffeine don't stop there, because once you increase the amount of firing in your brain, you have a kind of cascading effect, which changes all sorts of things. So you've got more firing in the brain, that releases more glutamate. Glutamate is the principal excitatory neurotransmitter of the brain, so you can consider it almost like the opposite of adenosine. It's associated with more action in the brain. It means your brain becomes more lively. Once you have more glutamate, this results in more dopamine. Dopamine is what we often consider the reward hormone. That's a little bit of an um, oversimplification. Actually, dopamine is released in the anticipation of reward. It increases motivation, focus, and memory because we think what's happening is important. It's also um, associated with feeling good, so that's one of the reasons that caffeine feels so great. Then you have norepinephrine. Norepinephrine is, of course, one of the fight or flight neurotransmitters. This is released when we're highly stressed, when we think we're in danger, and it causes our heart rate to increase. It causes palpitations, tremors. Um, at the same time, it gives us a kind of tunnel vision and focus and actually speeds up the rate of our thought and directs blood away from things like um, digestion and towards our brain. So basically that increases your brain power but it can also cause many of the side effects that people don't enjoy from caffeine such as the aforementioned palpitations, anxiety and difficulty sleeping. On top of this you also get an increased release of cortisol which is often released alongside norepinephrine, which is of course a stress hormone, and you get an increase in serotonin because of the increase in dopamine. Now those, those two can sometimes act against one another. So you have all sorts going on in your brain. 
And I try and talk about this in my previous videos. You can't affect one neurotransmitter without having this cascading effect. Still hot. So now the question becomes, should you use caffeine? Is it actually overall good for you? Does it give you a brain boost? Or does it just make you anxious and jittery? So different people react differently to caffeine. And in terms of those um, side effects associated with norepinephrine, your mileage may vary. Assuming you have a kind of more normal reaction to caffeine and you're not massively overdosing, then it has pros and cons. So on the one hand, yes, norepinephrine does raise the heart rate, does cause anxiety, and it can make it difficult to sleep. It's advisable that you stop drinking caffeine before four, unless you want it to affect your sleep. And this can end up creating something of a, of a knock-on effect that means you um, lie in the next day, have more caffeine, have worse sleep the next day. You see what I mean? If you want to boost your energy and your brain power, sleep is actually far more effective than caffeine. So you should prioritise sleep over caffeine if you're going to focus on just one. Another concern with caffeine is that it can lead to tolerance and even dependence. So what happens is, as you keep blocking those adenosine receptors, your brain responds by creating more adenosine receptors. So what this means is that now you feel tireder until you get the caffeine. It increases the base level. It's trying to maintain a normal equilibrium. Remember, everything in your brain is happening there for a reason. You need the adenosine to feel quiet and tired at the end of the day. So if your brain thinks, I'm not getting enough, it changes shape, it changes structure to make sure that it will get enough. You now need to drink more caffeine in order to get the same effect, and you need to drink some caffeine just to feel normal. And there are studies that suggest that for many people, what they think is them feeling groggy in the morning, what they think is brain fog associated with lack of sleep, is actually uh, caffeine withdrawal. And caffeine does actually do a lot of good for you as well. For starters, it's been shown to be neuroprotective against Parkinson's disease and some other conditions. So it can actually prevent age-related decline in the brain and other kinds of deterioration. It's also an antioxidant. On top of this, caffeine does improve focus, it does improve memory, largely due to the dopamine. And so if you're just trying to get that boost that you need, whether you're cramming for an exam or like me, writing really long articles and getting paid by the word, then it's a very useful tool. Caffeine has even been credited as being responsible for the renaissance. The idea is that we used to drink beer because the water was infected and that led to us being not so smart all the time. They drank beer all day. Then we realised we could drink hot drinks like tea and coffee and tea houses started emerging throughout Europe. Suddenly people became a little bit smarter and more eloquent. Great ideas followed on from that and you had the renaissance and the enlightenment. So yeah, caffeine can't be all that bad. And if you want to get more of the positive effects without so many of the negative effects, there are things you can do to make caffeine a little bit more gentle. Some people use it with L-theanine. One of the most basic nootropic stats is to um, drink caffeine with L-theanine together. And they occur together naturally in green tea. L-theanine is an amino acid and it does increase focus, but it also slightly quietens down, takes the edge off the caffeine. So if you want to have more focus without the jitters, that might be one option for you. You can even try drinking a green tea such as Yerba Mate which Darwin described as the world's most perfect stimulant. So yeah, caffeine has a lot of effects on the brain. It does a lot of different things to you, and it's really up to you whether you want to keep using it. I have to keep using it because I'm badly addicted. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you found it interesting and useful. And if so, please like, share, and subscribe. I'm trying to increase my production values. As always, just got a new camera. I'm trying to use a new recording device. Don't know if that's going to go into the video yet. Even got new lighting and stuff. So yeah, hope you found it a little bit improved from my previous videos and I'll be continuing hopefully with this higher standard of quality along with the usual content on the brain, on working from home, productivity, bodybuilding, you name it. So please stick around and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.